October 1st, the Atlas Mountains race is going to start. Uh, 1,167 kilometers on the bike. And uh, I just wanted to go over my stuff. So uh, this here is the stuff I'll be wearing for the next eight days, nine days in a row. Um, <clears throat> here I have some cold weather stuff because the mountains are supposedly able to get uh, snowy cold. My gloves, extra skinny gloves, extra, extra skinny gloves and some uh, warm socks. <clears throat> Some more cold weather stuff. Heavy duty outdoor research balaclava. Mm, I can layer on a couple of neck gaiters. Here's a merino wool long sleeve t-shirt. Here's my um, sleeping stuff. I have a sleeping bag and an inflatable mat, an extra um, a down blanket and an emergency bivy, a rain jacket, <clears throat> my puff jacket, another layer, my little 10-year-old uh, uh, Patagonia fleece vest. <clears throat> Some snacks, uh, at least to get started with. These are Louisville vegan jerky, salty and delicious. Um, at least uh, I think day one and two worth of eating salty stuff um, also the idea here is here I have some uh, oatmeal and some ramen noodles and my little titanium mug and fork so ideally at night I will stop and uh, light a fire and boil some water and have hot oatmeal or hot ramen noodles to raise my spirit uh, this alone on along around my waist is all first aid kit i forgot that so this is my this is my uh toiletries i have uh, uh butt wipes uh neosporin for uh, uh for my butt again toilet paper uh, there's also a toothbrush and toothpaste in there <clears throat> um so first aid kit in here I have everything I need for headaches or pain, um, diarrhea treatment thereof, uh, to include antibiotics. I have a splint, should I break something? And uh, what else? Um, diarrhea, headache, oh, and uh, yeah, your, your average, uh, your common uh, scrape and scratch and cut care. It's all in here. <clears throat> okay, these are three sets of extra batteries for my GPS. This is my headlamp, which is my backup lighting. I have lighting on the bike, uh, but at night if I'm lighting a fire and stuff like that. This is an extra uh, battery for my headlamp, although I can also recharge it. <clears throat> extra tubes, two extra tubes for my bike. They're these uh, super light tubolito type. I've never used them before. I hope they won't let me down. A couple of extra straps I'm not currently using for anything. These are my, this is my uh, spare, or uh, not spare, like random or miscellaneous uh, repair kit. Uh, I have some, some paracord, some grease, pliers, zip ties, tire irons, pocket knife, and uh, bicycle uh, uh, tire sidewall repair kit. And I think that's about it. <clears throat> oh, and my, my wrench because uh, that's how I can get my back tire off of my bike. No quick release on that one. Uh, this are a spare, I have four spare um, uh, spokes. Two for my front wheel, two for my back wheel. <clears throat> this is my vest, will go on my body, obviously. This is a Sunnybag um, solar panel that will, in theory, keep my, this guy right here, 
charged, topped off this is a battery bank. So at night, when I stop, I can recharge my phone or my headlamp. In the meantime, this thing will keep it charged. These are some additional spare parts. I have brakes, uh, my gear shifting cable, brake cable, and an extra belt because my belt is, uh, because my bike is belt driven. Roll off. This is my fire starting kit. I have a, I have a um, lighter and some shredded old tire tube as a kindling. Again, that goes with my ramen noodles and with my little titanium cup. This is um, my <coughs> spares, little spares container. I have a, an additional spoke repair kit, spare valves, spare uh, chain ring bolts, spare random nuts and bolts of every size, and little uh, rubber bands for the for the uh, GPS spare GPS holder. A few other, a few other random little things. This is my super cool little miniature ratchet kit. <clears throat> This is my pen, uh, good for writing. Also doubles as a weapon for stabbing people in the eyeball. Only if they deserve it. Only should they have uh, other than honorable intentions. <clears throat> this is my GPS. The tracks are all loaded up for the next 11,167 uh, uh, kilometers worth of pedaling. Uh, again, this uses uh, those batteries. It has a full set of batteries in. This is some. Uh, this is my um, charging kit. Uh, I have three cables: one for my iPhone, one for my GPS. So the GPS can actually work directly off of this thing too, although it's not ideal. And also another charger for um, for this guy, for the. Uh, for the battery pack, I, if I stop somewhere, I can plug it into a wall and charge it. <clears throat> my helmet, my um, uh, um, mileage uh, uh, of the entire race kind of cheat sheet to help me figure out when, especially like when the next resupply stops are and stuff like that. My wallet. <clears throat> My waterproofy uh, bag for for my phone. Uh, my important documents to keep on my body. Here's a doctor's note that says I shall not die in the attempt of this, and I have no no conditions that will prevent me from trying to kill myself doing this. I think I have some insurance documentation that says that should I uh, fail, and in fact. Uh, die in the mountain somewhere my insurance will cover the removal of my remains or, or words to that effect code vaccination and uh, and my passport three bottles 1.25 liters each i think no uh 800 milliliters on these guys i also have two more soft bottles that go in my running vest and that's, I think that's it. All right, now I'm gonna pack it all into the bike. All right, here is my race passport, or brevet, I think they're calling. Bonjour, merci. So, that guy just helped me make the right turn. And this over here, it looks like it's some salt, salt mining, or I don't know what you call it. But there's all these little flat ponds with water on them and white stuff.
So I think it's a salt extraction thing. I'm around mile 47, something like that. Doing good, feeling good. So it is mile 72.25 or kilometer 72.25. Uh, I have averaged uh, 12.2 kilometers per hour, which is not bad, considering I have been climbing for the last uh, three eternities. I think I've been climbing since, uh, oh look, there's a biker. I've been climbing since the Big Bang, uh, since the beginning of time. And this is not even the big hill. This is the hill before the big hill. Uh, but uh, it's like I said, 72.25 kilometers. That means it's less than 30 kilometers till I reach 100, which means sometime in the foreseeable future, I will be one tenth of the way through this. Almost one tenth of the way. All right. Still alive, still riding, still feeling good. And yep, just thunder and gray skies. And now, rain. So I'm gonna put my phone in a waterproof bag and stop talking. We have some Wi-Fi. Did you get a SIM card? No, I didn't get a SIM card. So okay. if there's Wi-Fi somewhere, if not, I'll I'll get your email. Yeah. Oh yeah, we can do that too. So that is. Oops back 95 kilometers it is 1745 it's nice and cool perfect cycling weather uh, there's a little bit of a drizzle uh, we've been climbing i think how far have we climbed 2030 2030 and i think there's still another thousand or so to go uh, before we reach the pass and then we go down into checkpoint one. But I'm feeling good, everything, all systems are still operational. So here we go, let's keep climbing. So it's kilometer 118. And I'm at the summit, or I'm at the, I, I think this is called Teluet Pass, the highest point in the whole goddamn race. So, we only have uh, 20,000 more meters to climb throughout the next uh, eight days, but uh, we'll never get this high again. This is uh, three or 4,000 meters of climbing, something like that. Depends on who you ask. Anyway. Now we have a long downhill that we're going to walk, I think, because it's pretty rocky from what I've heard. Uh, and at the bottom of the hill is a checkpoint, and I think I'm going to have some hot tea, some hot meal, and maybe sleep there for a while. Alright. Day two, just past this. I don't know what it is, but it's super cool looking. I have been pedaling 171 kilometers for the last, I don't know, three or five kilometers. I've been on this riverbed which is kind of like skiing in powder uphill. Every time you make a little mistake, you sink. 
I mean, not deep, but yeah, like a few inches, so you have to get off and push again. Not my favorite. There's supposed to be a restaurant at mile or kilometer 250, and I'm at 256, according to my GPS anyway. And uh, I think that those lights up there may be a restaurant. I've been seeing those lights for the last, I don't know, half an hour. Finally getting close. So let's hope the restaurant's open at 11 p.m. I need some Moroccan tea, some tagine, some omelette, some yogurt. I need lots of food. I feel good in terms of I'm not sick. I have no undue pains, but I am exhausted. So I need to sleep a good six hours and replenish my sources of whatever. All right, let's see if I can get to that restaurant. <sighs> It's nice and warm in here.